I'll be back. Thank you. over here with the mic just off to my right, your left. We will form a line up this row. Anyone who's VIP should be roughly somewhere here in the front if you haven't requested that already. We do appreciate you coming out today. You know, it's a beautiful day here in Albuquerque. Wish it was a little warmer, especially in here. Uh, but they're just about ready, just kind of giving you a heads up here, be ready. When they come out, we'll cue the music and uh, we'll get going.
Thundercats to go! Here we go, everybody! Let's give it a big welcome to everyone's favorite Texas Ranger, Jared Pelecki! Our next guest, Sam Smith! And we got Julian Richings! And Elena! It's friggin' cold in here. What the heck? Turn the damn beat up. You're happy, aren't you? Because in here doesn't mean you have to turn the I'm on fire. I'm sweating. <laughs> Do we have, can we borrow that mic from you? Or are you asking yeah, questions? No. Yes, oh, I, could, I can make the sacrifice. No problem. No, no worries. Do we have a fifth? Hi, guys. Thank y'all so much for coming out. There's no uh, way we'd rather ring in 2024 than uh, seeing some friendly faces and some new faces, some familiar faces. So just thank y'all. Feel flattered and honored. And uh, I think it's be for all of us when I say uh, we're happy to be here and thank y'all so much. Hey, hey. That was my fucking line. You can't steal it. <laughs> you can borrow it for one. All right, are we doing? Are we ready to go, guys? Let's do it. We got lots of questions. We got lots of answers up here on the tables. Did if we don't have, if we don't have any answers, we'll make up lies. <laughs> so that's what we do. We got the microphone over here to my right. What? Hi. Go ahead and make a line like we mentioned earlier. Hello. All right. Hi there. Coming. It's so exciting to see you guys. You too. Um, what episode are you guys most proud of that you just made and you really knew like this is something special? What episode are we most proud of that we made and of Supernatural? Uh, either show. Uh, I'll go with Supernatural because we got some Supernatural family members up here. Uh, what episode? I guess I'll start. Sorry, I hear a little. Was ET just up here? Why are we hearing? Just kidding. kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think for me, I, this may seem obvious, uh, the episode I'm most proud of and the most difficult episode to shoot was the series finale. Yeah, it was rough. It was, it was really rough. Um, and it was a weird... I think uh, when when the COVID strike happened, we got Jensen and I got sent home from Canada on Friday, March 13th, Friday 13th, appropriately, of 2020, because they thought they were gonna shut the borders down. So they were like, get across the border, go see your family. We don't know what's going on. You know, there's a worldwide pandemic. And so we 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 had the scripts by then. We had the last two scripts uh, of the series, and we got home and didn't go back to Vancouver until August 1st-ish. So I have four months and a half to sit there and read through the dialogue, and I couldn't read through the scene, the barn scene especially, without crying. And so I'd like go, yeah, we have a little treadmill at our house, and so I had nothing else to do. I'd be like, hey Genevieve, uh, can you take the kids for a second? I'm gonna go just get a little run in and read through the, the episodes. And she's like, yeah, yeah do it. <clears throat> so I'd go and I'd come back, my face would be all puffy and red. She'd be like, oh shit, are you okay? Like, thinking I got bad news about a friend with COVID or something. I'd be like, yeah, just read the finale. It's cool, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, so that was very difficult. Uh, but I, I was very proud of that, and uh, it was very heartbreaking as well. Um, guys and gals? Um, my intro that I did last <laughs> My proudest moment was that I didn't crash the car. <laughs> I will say that the intro of death, uh, with the slow motion you walking and the guy bumping into you and falling, is one of my favorite sequences in Supernatural. Which one? Yeah. 
Thank you. I, I was taught this was my first time on the set. I hadn't ever met anybody, any of you guys at all. And they, the, the AD said, get in that car and just steer it past the camera and go over there and hit your mark. And I got in the car, I'm like, sure, I can drive. And I turned the wheel and the car went. <laughs> and it's like a boat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. That's my pride. Bravo. Sam, Medjolina. Um, Great, Sam. I had many little moments here and there that made me so happy. Um, I think I did really enjoy an episode that was mostly you and me. It was uh, called The Raid with lots of vampires. And it's because my character, what I loved about it was she finally fe felt like she was on her feet, like she caught up. Um, but my very last episode was the most meaningful to me because I felt like they gave little pieces that had been missing. And, it was, and the, everything was so subtle. Um, I think it was, what's it called? Uh, absence. <laughs> Um, and it was just very small, but really meaningful. And so, um, and it was really hard for me because you, it was like, it wasn't like running and stabbing, you really, it was like very small and like just these little moments. Um, we had a great scene and I got to have a nice scene with Misha and uh, Alex. And then um, my scene with Jensen, I was sleeping. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed it and I felt like that was, a lot of that was the writers gave me a little gift as I was departing Herpes. for the final time. <laughs> yeah. Not final, Winchester's don't die. Not for the writer. Well, you die a lot of times. You die a lot of times. They really enjoy that. Um, I think for me, I mean, the whole, the whole experience, like this, just playing this one character has really changed my life in a lot of ways. Like it's, we've all, really connected and it's so beautiful to like walk into a series I think I came on like season seven or eight and to come into a series that late into a season and become part of this big beautiful global family um, has been so impactful so you know just transcends what we've done on set um, all my all my set moments were really fun I mean you guys were so welcoming and it's yeah, it's so great. Like, I think the first day I got to set, you guys came in the hair and makeup trailer, and again, season eight, you don't usually get that kind of interaction, and I think we were talking about, like, Texas, because I lived in Texas. It was just, like, the most wholesome experience. Um, but I would say, I just, for comedy's sake, like, my favorite episode that I did was when I got to kick the shit out of Crowley. <laughs> that was all of our favorites. <laughs> When we shot that, Mark's a giver. We all joke about Mark, but Mark, Mark is, um, he's a little scratchy and he's also a giver. <laughs> so he really gave it. He like wanted to, I kicked him over and then um, I think it was um, Brad Greaser came around the set with a deli counter. So everyone took a number so they could get in line to do the same thing to Mark. <laughs> so that was memorable for me. Amazing. Uh, I'm going to keep it supernatural because I, there's, I've, I've been so fortunate to have such a long career and I can't remember most of it, so I couldn't remember moments. <laughs> um, but uh, it, 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 probably the hugest, one of the hugest moments of my life is the day that I met Jared Padalecki. And I mean, I, it, it's, I've got the job, so I don't need to say that. Um, <laughs> and he ain't going to fire me. So uh, it was huge. I, I met an individual that, that has, has been so giving and, and so to, to my family, to me and to my family and, and, and everybody uh, around us on the show that we're doing now. Uh, I have to say that the show that we're doing now is the favorite show, my favorite show that I've ever done in the 40 years, 40 plus years of my career. Um, without, without a question, without a doubt, if you haven't seen it, start watching it, please. Um, but I think as far as Supernatural, I, I, I didn't understand most of what that character was doing and, and I'm still trying to figure it out. So, uh, I mean, even even uh, Bob Singer was like, oh, what the hell is going on with those candles? So, but I, I, I have to say that the, the scene that I had with, with Jensen, uh, when it were, he turns into the yellow-eyed demon, was a blast. I had so much fun. I got to get up and sniff on Jensen real good and it was, it was, uh, 
it, it was fun. I really enjoyed doing it. It's, and and I and just like just I mean for both of them when I met both of them I, I took I think I took Jensen aside about four days working on the show and I said I just want to say that you two guys have got your heads screwed on right. Keep it that way because this this business can really twist you up and it hasn't done it to this day. So. All right. Thank you. Our next question. Hi there. Hi. You can bend it. It's good. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, you're good. I want to say it was a pleasure meeting most of you, but also most. <laughs> <laughs> who, who messed who, up? Who was, the, who was the regret? <laughs> um, I. My question was, or is, what's your favorite um, off-camera prank you did on, J on Jensen? On Jensen. I think that's probably only for me because I think by the time we had uh, the rest of us on stage up here, he and I had stopped pranking each other. Uh, they were they were stink bombs. Uh, I think he and I realized at roughly the same time. I think Tall Tales in season two, where Sam and Dean are pranking each other, kind of throughout. Um, we kind of decided to let art and life imitate each other. And so we would kind of screw with each other and I'd have uh, the wardrobe department sew the bottom of his pants together. So we would go put it, and I wouldn't see it because he'd be changing his trailer. I would just hear the commotion and be like, <laughs> but soon it, it escalated. It was sort of exponential. Like it wasn't like, oh, we're having fun. It was like, oh, we're trying to kill each other. And so I think he and I both just kind of like, hey, let's wait and hope we get like a strange dude in season four that we can both prank together as opposed to pranking each other because we're on set every day. So this is going to escalate to like nuclear bombs. Um, and so we, we stopped quickly. When, uh, the funny thing about that one, I just got done watching that episode the other oh, really? day as well. Yeah. So that, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, about that as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your question. Nice to meet you. Thank and you. most of us had a great time meeting you as well. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Sorry, it's a little short. Um, <laughs> what's been your favorite location that you filmed at? Like most beautiful or most memorable or that sort of thing? Oh, wow. Uh, and it could be any show, right? Okay. Uh, Y'all have a answer off the cuff? Or, um... I just, um, well, we were talking about this last night. I was fortunate enough to do a mini-series in Turkey, and that was really great. They've got such an amazing history. But I just finished a movie, and I shot in Tahiti for a month um, over the summer, so that was a great gig. Uh, I'll go. Um, I shot Flight of the Phoenix in Namibia, uh, in the southern part of Africa. And my character, for those who haven't watched it, close your ears, I die uh, about half an hour into the movie, which is great because, but this was good. And this, I'm proud of myself because I planned this, or I'd like to think I planned this. Um, it, was, it was cheaper for the studio to just give me a hotel room for all the days I wasn't working than it was to fly me back to Los Angeles. Uh, so I flew there and I probably worked 20 days, and I was there for four months. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. life hack. For all of you, for all of you actors and actresses to be, do that. Get a movie somewhere that's expensive to fly, and make sure you die early on. Because uh, it's cheaper for them to keep you there. Uh, but, but I had a great time. I went to Cape Town, and I went to, uh, I touched Japan, and uh, then took and did safaris, and this and that. So uh, I think that was a unique experience. God, I can't remember. I can't think of any place to really enjoy shooting. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you get old and cranky. <laughs> Julian, Sam? I, I tend to be um, a member of a lurking group of ne'er-do-wells, you know, um, so I'm the guy on the left that looks the creepiest of the bunch. And then after that, I'll get killed, or you think that I'm going to get killed, and so 
Like you, I get a lot of days when I'm not shooting, and it's the best, and I've been in a couple of locations like that. So a lot of people go, sorry you're not in today, sorry, it's fine by me, it's fine. <laughs> and, uh, locations are the best places, really, when you get to know people, you get to try different restaurants and everything, so that's, that's the bonus for me as an actor. Um, I think the prettiest place I got to film was just a few days on a tiny little island in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like heaven. I mean, it was like unspoiled and clear turquoise water. I mean, couldn't beat it. Um, I didn't get to stay long, but I also sp spent a little bit of time in Manila, which I found fascinating. And, like the just the whole culture and the way everything looked, and the jitneys are amazing. So they, I may be a little bit wrong, but they're, um, my understanding is that they're leftover American military jeeps that were left there. And they have turned them into solid, they're chrome, the whole thing is chrome, and they, and the backs are open, and they're like taxis that you jump on and on, but they're decorated like every holiday mixed together. There's like streamers and Christmas lights and flags and multicolors and, and they're shiny silver and they're just like driving up. It's incredible. Is anyone from the Philippines here? Am I close? Is I right? They're amazing. And there's old forts and it's just, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful country. So. And I, did, I, I will uh, also plug this. About this time last year, I was able to film just one scene in Santa Fe and I had a great time here in New Mexico. So, cheers to that. Thank you for your question. Thank you guys. I just, the, the show has had like a huge impact on my life and I've watched it since the first season, even though the first season came out the year before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> but just thank you guys so much. It was so nice to meet you guys. Thank you and go sit down. <laughs> Go straight to hell. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Cass. <laughs> I have two questions, if that's all right. I'll start with like the shorter one first. What would you say is kind of like, I guess, beginner tips for someone who's going to start out as an actor, like someone who already has a background in acting already? What kind of tips would you give them? That's a great question. Uh, I'll give it a shot because I, I have been asked this. Um, I'm sure we all have. Uh, I spent too much time once I became a professional actor trying to be what 17, 18 year old actors were in the early 2000s. You know, like the spiky hair and the puka shells and the. <laughs> loose pants with flip-flops on. I'm like, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do if I want to work. And it sucked. I was still, luckily people believed in me enough to still hire me here and there. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that and I was very fortunate. But when I finally just went, you know what? I'm tired of pretending to be somebody else because there are other people that are better at being somebody else than I am. But no one is better at being me than I am. So not that I'm better than anybody else or vice versa, but if the role is right for who Jared is, then I hope I'm not pretending to be this famous person or that famous person or this you know successful uh, action star right now or that successful comedian right now. So just embrace who you are, spend a lot of time thinking about who you are and what your story is, and I think that'll translate uh, in characters you play. Persevere. Yeah, yeah, don't don't give up. If you're gonna if you're gonna that's even think about acting, you just you have to know that you want to be an actor, and that's all I, that's all you want to do. And there's nothing else that will satisfy you in your life. You got to be a little mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. It's a big part of that, really. Not a little. I always say too, I think it's really important, especially if you, I don't think it's necessary anymore to live in Los Angeles or New York, it was back when we all started, but I always say just get involved locally, like with your local community, because 20, 30, 40 years into your career, you're going to work with the same people. I mean, the showrunners, this is a beautiful thing about having like longevity in a career too, is um, I was fortunate enough to work with Misha when he directed his first episode of Supernatural, and you see everybody gets to sort of advance 
Um, and that's the same thing. So just create your community. And it's, you know, it's not about pretending. It's just genuinely creating bonds. And that's your, that's your community. That's your circle. That's who you're going to grow with. Thank you. What made you guys realize you wanted to get into the acting industry? I, I'm there from as far as I can remember. When did you know you wanted to act? I, I've always wanted to act. We, we, we were actually having a chat yesterday. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a middle child and I've always felt that by being an actor, it defines me in some way. I'm not quite sure whether I'm the, I'm not the youngest, I'm not the eldest, and I feel that I shift my personality a lot, and I feel that I'm really at one with the character that I'm playing. So I find a lot of comfort in presenting a character, but I just wanted to add to what everybody was saying about things that you must do as an actor, and that's um, accept rejection and not take it personally and kind of go you know adding to what Jared was saying uh, know that it's you and your inner strength is you it's and not go oh my god I wasn't right I got to learn how to be fitter bigger stronger whatever uh, put on pounds lose pounds you know what whatever it's just believe in yourself and accept rejection because you are going to get rejected we all all of us up here have we um, I had a I had a whole other career before I started acting, and um, and then I and then that that was done, and I wanted to find you know find something else to do, and I, so I started doing theater down in Austin, and I got on stage the first first time I got a laugh, it like stopped me, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is what I want to do. I want to make people laugh. I want to make them feel. I want to make them enjoy. I want to make them sad. I want to make them happy. It's just like you know, it, it's it's. And you get that, and when you're on stage, you get that immediate, immediate audience feedback. And um, it's, it's, it's a drug. It really is a drug. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm still hooked on it. So, um, but as, 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 far as, as far as getting into, you know, doing, I think doing theater and doing anything that you can to, or doing background work, doing, I, I, when, I, when I was living in, in Austin, I used to drive up to Dallas to do background on the, on the ship, on the series Dallas. And uh, and then I and then I ended up being you know a series regular on it when they brought it back. Um, so it's it's a it's a it's a crazy business and, and stuff like that happens. So it's it's just just learn as much as you can and just just be just have just an incredible appetite for it. Thank you so much. Thank you. How are you? a translatable word in NSL, but particularly for Jerry, how many times did you get a reference for Charlie the Unicorn, uh, Magical Me Up Dude, Dude, you know, I'm missing it, sorry, there's a little echo. Dude, dude, put the mic up a little bit, sorry, I missed that. Sorry, how many times do you usually get a reference to Magical Me Up uh, <laughs> how many times do I get to reference the magical view of Pluridon that shows us the way? <clears throat> Not enough times, so thank you for giving me that opportunity. I owe you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Next person. Hello. Hey there. Oh my goodness, aren't you cold? No, get her. Are you freezing? The Tito's is helping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little, it'll help, I got you. <laughs> um, so my question is addressed for all of y'all. Me and my husband are transitioning out of the military, so we have a lot of opportunities and paths we could take. I was just curious if you guys ever missed an opportunity, or if there was a choice that you made that you were super happy, or happy with that decision. Wow, uh, thank you and your husband, wherever you are, for your service. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I often say, so So three of my four grandparents uh, all served. My dad's daddy was uh, a POW in World War II. My dad's mama uh, worked at Kelly Air Force Base in San Antonio until she was 75 years old. Uh, my mom's daddy was in the Navy in Korea. Um, and so military roots run deep in my family, and I'm very grateful that I get to 
wear makeup and play pretend for a little bit because I feel sad because people are like y'all are out there, so thank you. Uh, thank you. No, thank you. Um, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what, are, you are you cold now? Tito's ain't, Tito's ain't helping anymore. Uh, uh, I, you know what? I, I heard a podcast or something kind of on a similar subject recently where, because I, I think, uh, again, not to speak for the five of us, but there are certainly opportunities that we missed or sacrificed because of what we do. Which is to say, I guess, without getting into detail, every decision you make is an opportunity and a sacrifice. You know, I, I we are all here with y'all, and that's an amazing opportunity. My sacrifice is I don't see my wife tonight. I don't see my kids. They get it, they understand, they're proud that I'm here, they send their love. Um, Jen obviously sends her love. She lived here for three week, uh, years while shooting wildfire. Uh, but everything you do is, is a measure of, if I do that, every decision you make is the decision to not do a thousand other things that you could be doing. You're here right now, you could be taking a nap, you could be going for a drive, you could be going on vacation, you could be reading a book, you could be watching, a couple of TV shows that some of us have been on. Um, but you're here, and so embrace the positives, um, and just commit to whatever you do. And obviously, y'all have uh, made it clear that you're willing to risk your lives to, to protect uh, America and our citizens and what we believe in. So clearly, that also required, you know, you can't make it home for birthdays. You can't make it home for some weddings and some funerals, God forbid, and so on and so forth. But uh, hopefully when it's all said and done, you go, that was worth it, you know? I chose to do this, I missed these 10 things or these 100 things, but the one thing that I did, I, I, I see what I, what I gathered from that, and how I grew from that. So just a, a approach the future with positivity and curiosity and availability. Thank you, you so much. You bet, well, the best, you. best hopes and wishes for where, whatever, whatever area you go towards. You bet. Yeah. Our next question. Howdy. How's it going? Thank you all for coming to Albuquerque. We really appreciate you guys coming. I'm uh, pretty sure I can speak for everyone here that you've been a big part of our lives. Um, <laughs> I am currently restoring a 1967 four door hardtop. And uh, nice. so I actually have a quick two part question. Jared, can you give me any tips for taking care of the Impala, their baby? <laughs> What memento did you guys take home that you really mean something to you? What memento? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll start with the first question. So, I imagine you have a, um, not the original block, but probably a carbureted, not Actually, the, actually it's, a rest it's the action of the original 396. It was found in a chicken. Wow. Uh, you know, yes, yes. You know uh, Brian Malpin at Malpin Metal? And yes. Yeah. Thanks for starting it for me. No way. Uh, okay, so I guess my, I guess that had been said, um, and Cliffy did me a solid the other day, so, I, we, we, Cliffy's right there, uh, but if it's, especially if it's the original block, and it's, you know, 55 years old, uh, run it uh, regularly, you know, every week, every two weeks, I keep mine on a triple charger, um, but make sure you get, just like anything, like make sure you get all the fluids moving through, you get the engine warmed up. Uh, that's kind of just basic. Make sure you get your oil changed every 3,000 miles or three months. Uh, but memento, uh, I think the Impala that I have was a pretty big memento. Uh, I also, <laughs> I'll say this, my, uh, my, my stand-in and sometimes stunt double, Jason Cicchini, um, the, the last day of the last episode of the 15th season with Jensen and I standing at the bridge, he had two of the final call sheets printed up and he took my tape mark, my red tape mark, put on the call sheet. He took Jensen's blue tape mark, put on the call sheet and he framed it and gave it to us when they called rap and it's sitting in my office in Austin to this day. So it's my last ever tape mark. I, I just want to, I always want to say, my first day of working in a walker, I got my call sheet. Jerry gave me my call sheet with my mark on it. He did the same thing for me that he's been doing for him. And I, and I still got it, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's huge. 
Uh, as far as momentum, I'd have to say from the X-Files, I took a, uh, Skinner had a bulldog on his, on his uh, desk, and I took that son of a bitch. That's mine. You were my mother's favorite character in the X-Files. Bless you, I appreciate that. What, what was the second? Mementos. Oh, mementos. Uh, no. <laughs> you didn't keep the ring? You didn't take any fries or anything? Or the car? I, 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 or the I slink off film sets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're in disgrace. Go. No, I can't think of anything, really. A pair of shoes here and there. <laughs> winkle pickers. I got some winkle pickers. I played a rock and roll star one time. And Do you know what winkle pickers are? They're like long... Um, shoes with a point, like a. Are you really saying winkle pickers? Winkle pickers. That's what they call them in England. You really said yeah. winkle pickers. Yeah, teddy boys. Teddy boys, mate. We used to wear those, and we, I, I used to look really hard. Anyway. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I. Um, I have some great mementos from all the shows that I've been on, but one thing that I. I I'm not much of a collector, and I'm kind of a minimalist, so I don't like a lot of stuff, but one thing that's always really special to me is my chair back. So we get our, the backs of our chairs, and it has our name on it in the show. Um, so I have a chair back from every production I've worked on. It's usually something that's special to me, and sometimes you can get them signed or framed. I just have them all in my safe, um, and one day maybe I'll do something with them. But... What's the code to your safe, and where is it? <laughs> Thanks a bunch, brother. Good luck on your 67. Thank you, and it's going to be driven a lot because nobody leaves baby in a corner. <laughs> All right, our next question. How's it going, everybody? How are you doing? Good. Good. So I have two questions. Uh, as well as being a big Supernatural fan, I'm a big Arrowverse yeah. fan. Um, there we go. Um, I was wondering, in Legend of Tomorrow, we saw Baby in one of the episodes. Uh, was there talk of maybe any of you getting into that episode, or they told you anything? Yeah, there was. So Legends of Tomorrow was shot in Vancouver, uh, and we one of those funny things about being on a show on a network um, is you end up running to a lot of the other actors and actresses from other shows because you're always doing the same press junkets. I think we've seen the video of you and Jensen sleeping on the Flash set, so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and peeing on Mel's parking spot. Oh, we didn't actually pee. Just to be clear, uh, but yeah, we we tried to. We, it was the, our schedules, mine and Jensen's schedule, while Legends was shooting, was pretty busy. And so we talked about it for years, whether it was Arrow or Legends or Vampire Diaries. We always talked about like how fun it would be to cross over, uh, and we never crossed through the Arrowverse, but. Uh, you know, we're not dead yet, or we're dead, but Winchester Stone died, I'm gonna say. Uh, is that alluding to something? What's that? Is that alluding to something? A movie thing? Are we alluding to something? A reunion. Is, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing in the works right now, but Jensen and I have talked. Um, it's not the last you've seen of Sandy Dean Winchester. Thanks, Brad. It's for you. Um, so I moved in with my girlfriend this past year, and she got me into Gilmore Girls. Uh, sure. I'm hitting on all of them. Sure. She got you into Gilmore Girls. I'm so sorry. And I got her into Supernatural. Um, on season two, where you, where, where Sam and Dean are on the the set of Stars Hollow, uh, did they talk to you about that? Or yes, they... yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. They did. It was a funny. It, that was a funny little uh, Easter egg. Yeah, it was still early on in Supernatural, and we weren't yet doing a bunch of Easter eggs. But we decided, like, hey, this would be a fun time to break the fourth wall. And, and then a couple years later, we ended up playing Jensen Ackles and Jared Padalecki playing Sam and Dean Winchester playing <laughs> Jensen Ackles. <laughs> So uh, I think it was one of those, I think the writers were testing out uh, just how, how far y'all would support us, and y'all kept supporting us, so here we are 15 years later, so thank you. Right on. Well, thank you guys, appreciate it. All right, let's get to our next question. Now let's try to limit them to one question each, please. All right. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm a big fan. 
the show means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, this question is for you. Um, what was your favorite moment with uh, Jensen Ackles in Supernatural? What was my favorite moment with Jensen? Yeah. In the show? Yeah. Uh, God, uh, thank you for your question. Glad the show meant a bunch. Uh, thank you. Uh, there were so many. I mean, it was 15 years, and so I've, I've said this to people, um, just to put it into perspective, but it's as if you went to kindergarten with somebody and sat next to them all through kindergarten, then all through first grade, then all through second grade, all through third grade, all through fourth grade, all through fifth grade, all through sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, junior year, senior year, and freshman and sophomore year of college. <laughs> it's a long fucking time. Uh, and so within that, time frame, uh, we had so many moments, and there were a lot of times, he and I are kind of wired similarly, where we don't really pat ourselves on the back a lot, or kind of sit back and go like, yeah, we're pretty cool, or yeah, we're doing a good job. But every now and again, uh, we would look at each other and be like, damn, like this is pretty cool, man. Like, good shit, you know? And then it was like, as soon as it came, it went. I was like, all right, back to work. Um, I will say what's what's occurring to me right now is I believe it was season 12 of Supernatural at Comic-Con in San Diego. Uh, the band Kansas played Carry On My Wayward Son to introduce us on the stage. Which was uh, bizarre, because I've, I've seen them in concert. Like I saw them in Sticks when I was uh, uh, a junior in high school or something. They were doing a reunion tour with uh, the band Sticks as well. Um, and so to have them open for us in front of 7,000 people uh, was was really rad. And then there were a few milestones of our 100 episode party, our 200 episode party, our 300 episode party. Uh, <laughs> am I boring you? Uh, but also, uh, I, I can't speak for Jensen. I think he's mentioned it, but when Sam and Dean hug on the bridge in the finale, that wasn't Sam and Dean. That was Jensen and Jerry. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. For sure. Hey! Uh-oh. 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 Bend that mic. Uh -oh. Or, you better hear that. What was your favorite part of New Mexico? Thank you! Being here. Good to be here in New Mexico. Talking to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Meeting new faces. You know, I think a lot of us have been uh, all over the nation and all over the world even meeting people that are also passionate about whether it's Supernatural or other shows or movies we've been in. It's just a pleasure because we don't always get a chance to see that. Right here it seems like, oh, this must be what we're used to. It's certainly not what I'm used to. You know, most of the time I'm going to work, I'm going home, I'm spending time with my wife and my kids, my friends, my family. So to come here and see that it means something to kiddos like you and adults like those out there, uh, it makes going back to work and setting that alarm first thing Monday morning that much easier. Thank you. tickets can I get for that? Um, my kids have grown up set. I was on a show, Stargate. Um, I was pregnant. I was, I was really pregnant in the show. It was a great way to start a job. I got pregnant when we shot the pilot. 
Um, but they supported it and they wrote it in. And um, so that daughter was born on that show. And uh, I've always had like a, a crib or a something in my trailers. But my kids have been all over the world with me. Um, for a certain period of time, I take like one kid at a time. We call them mommy trips. So I get like special time with them. Um, selfishly, it also helps me. It kind of gets lonely on the road. I don't know if y'all feel that way. You know, it's, it's really glamorous. You get to go away for a month or two months or something and you're in this cool new place. But you know, you go back to your room by yourself and I think we can all self-soothe for a certain period of time. But you're away. You're away from your family. You're away from your friends. Um, a lot of times when you get back to, say, if you live in Los Angeles or New York, your friends are off working on another show, so it's a lot of disconnection. Um, so I, 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 I feel like I built my family at the same time as I built my career, so I don't really know one without the other. Um, and I feel it's just been a tremendous blessing to my life. I feel like my family is a beautiful distraction from my career, and my career um, gives me a lot of focus uh, so that I can be present with my kids. convention for two days, then I'm like, well, we're here. Let's spend an extra three days and we'll see everything in Washington, D.C. or San Francisco or London or somewhere. Take Just take advantage of like piggybacking onto something where I have to be anyway for work. Um, and it's always a gift when they get to come because my husband has to work and my kid has school. So if we can squeeze it in and I get to have them with me instead of me being off by myself and them continuing life at home. It's always, um, it's nice. And it's also, I think, very, very small, like not trying to be on a soapbox, but I think it's important for my family to see me in my career as well. Um, to see me as the, the working person outside of the home. Um, and especially for my son, I think. Um, and I enjoy that. I enjoy being able to be wearing my other hat and not making grilled cheese sandwiches necessarily, <laughs> you know. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's fun to experience as a, as a, as a man. Um, yeah, I, I go a lot of places with my wife. Uh, my kids are a little older, they've got their own lives, they're on their own journeys. But I gotta say something, at the risk of sounding a, a bit corny, um, I, I have to feel that the family is here. Um, the, the actors that I've met for the past, I don't know, 10 years doing conventions, it's been an extraordinary experience for me, um, meeting the same folks over and over again. As an actor, you tend to parachute in a place, do a job, go on the hours that you're required, disappear. You don't have a lot of social time together, but meeting you guys has given us the opportunity to get to know each other yeah. and uh, understand what a privilege it is. You know? And in fact, the funny thing is my family always go, oh, it's fine, you're going to a supernatural convention, Dad, you'll be fine. Because they know I'm going to be with family, whereas sometimes if I'm going to a new gig or something, we be okay? Because we know you're useless, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but so it, this is also an extension of my family, so it's it's a real privilege. Uh, oh, um, well, my, I, I met my wife on she was uh, she was Jill, Jillian Anderson's photo double on the show, so I, I met her and I've, I've known her since I've known her since the beginning of that. So she's she's been around the business. My daughter was was born while I was doing the X Files, so she was on the set all the time. So their their question to me is usually, don't you have some place to go <laughs> other than here? <laughs> no, really. no, so they they they've been around, you know, they've been around me working uh, for many years. So they're they're kind of over it. They're they're not not really, but I mean, it's just it's they're 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 always happy to to see me come home, and they're always happy to see me leave. Yeah. And I uh, yeah, I think you know. Jen would love to be here right now. She still has a lot of friends who live in Albuquerque uh, from the cast crew of Wildfire. Um, but someone has to watch the kids. So, uh, but she would love to. I mean, I guess, I guess way back in the day, I did.